Hey there guys, my name is Blake, also known as the Nerd, and welcome to a video that's even new for me. I've never done a video like this before, and I wanted to make it special. For those of you who've been with me for the past five years, or even later if you're that far back, you know that I'm a fan of the Project TV series, and that the series itself has made a huge impact on the channel. I've done many videos about it, I've done Let's Play of one of the 3DS games, I've done a series dedicated to the Project Diva series, and a lot of you are probably familiar with that one. In fact, probably most of you came from that series itself. And I love the series so much, it's made a huge impact on my life, that I wanted to dedicate some part of it to just playing all the Project Diva games. And when I did, that was satisfying. And I wanted to do more after doing that. So I went ahead and collected the remaining physical collections, or the physical games, and now I have a full collection of every Project Diva game available. The only exceptions to that are the ones that are released digitally around the world, including the Dreamy Theater and Carlful Sage, which I have on my phone, which I'm used to recording right now, so I can't really show that off, and the arcade cabinet for Project Diva. Listen, even if I had it, I don't know where I'd put it in my house. It's small. I'm sorry, I don't live in a huge mansion with millions of dollars. I, I wish I did, but unfortunately you gotta stick with what you have. So with this collection, I wanted to show off that these games are, for the most part, available physically internationally. So there are going to be plenty of physical copies that are Japanese because they were exclusive to Japan, but there's also going to be a few that are released internationally. By that I mean released in North America, since I live in North America, and it's a lot easier to obtain the North American copies of Project Diva games instead of having to pay a little extra for European ones. I'm sorry, Europeans, but uh... I really can't afford shipping. Although, weirdly enough, I did buy a copy of Xenoblade Chronicles in Europe and I didn't even know about that. Interesting story. Anyways, I also do want to apologize for the glare that happens as well, because I really tried my best with the lighting, tried to like adjust it, lift the dimming lights and whatnot, but I'll make sure I'll hold it so you guys don't see lighting glares, but during the first parts you might see a bit of glare. With that being said, Let's start off with the very first Project Diva games, because I'm doing this chronologically as well. Let's go back to 2009. PSP was still a huge thing in Japan, though I'm not sure how relevant it was in the US because of Nintendo DS. Actually, now that I say it out loud, I think the DS had more relevance in Japan than the PSP. But regardless of that, the PSP is still a thing in Japan and internationally. And one of the biggest games to come out, well, I, I don't know how big it was back in the days, were three games on the Vocaloid itself. Project Diva, Project Diva Second, and Project Diva Extend. All three PSP gems. As you might expect, these games only ever came out of Japan, and that's because Miku was at peak popularity at this time in Japan. Meanwhile, in places like North America and Europe, she had internet fame, but not so much to where these games would be released internationally. And Sega definitely jumped on board once they saw the opportunity. So, playing these games for the very first time, and yes, I actually did also buy a PSP. Granted, it was a Japanese one I didn't know until now. It was actually a fun experience. The only downside was the PSP that I got only lasted two hours. It's old technology. I can expect it to last not as long as it used to. And if you were wondering about the pricing, you can actually get all three of these for a really reasonable price. I actually found someone on eBay that was actually selling these three copies for $30 in total. And actually, funny enough, there was a comment on the tier list video that I made for Project Diva series that linked me to the exact same buyer on eBay that I bought these copies from. So to the person who commented that link, um, you probably didn't notice, but congratulations, you actually, <laughs> you actually linked me to the exact person that I bought this from. Look at this. Also, I didn't realize at the, um, the top right here, actually on the top left of this one too, you guys can't see it because of the glare, but there's like a the little uh, Project Diva symbol. Actually, that's on all three of them. Holy crap, how did I not notice that before? So if I were to give my retrospective on playing these games for the very first time, it's kind of like people playing Pokemon Red and Blue for the very first time that have played other games. A lot of us growing up played Pokemon Red and Blue, and we still love the, those games because of nostalgia, but there are also so many people that have played the more recent Pokemon games like Sun and Moon, X and Y, Sword and Shield, that have never played the original Pokemon games. 
and when they play the original Pokemon games, whether it's on the 3DS or through an emulator, even though Nintendo probably wouldn't like that, they don't get much out of it, unlike we do, but they definitely understand the origins. And I think for some people, they appreciate the series more because of it. That's how I felt when I played the first three Prodigy Diva games, especially the first Prodigy Diva game. There was a lot of flaws with the Prodigy Diva games. And while I would never play them for a long while, I definitely understand the origins of where it came from. And I can definitely appreciate the Prodigy Diva games now. Maybe even more so than I already have, because I started off weirdly enough with Mariah DX fully. Actually, it was F as a demo and then X. But I've played these games. I love the series even more than I already have. <laughs> Man, look at this artwork. This is probably some of the most gorgeous artwork for like early ones. It reminds me so much of like the old red and blue ones as well. <laughs> I know, I'm making a lot of comparisons to Pokemon, but that's how I feel holding these. It's like holding a copy of Pokemon Red and Blue. It feels weird. And I have a er, like a weird nostalgia, even though I never played these games as a kid, or I guess as a teenager because these came out in 2009. 2010 and 2010, 2011 respectively? I think this came out in 2011. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it actually did came out in 2011. But yeah, these are the original PSP games that started the series as a whole. It actually feels so amazing to actually have these in person. It's like a little gem. I love it. So the next place I have on here is Project Diva F, and this is a perfect example of international because as you can see, this is a Japanese copy, and this is an international copy, the ESRB one, which is the North American one. And this is something really unique that's only present in the PS3 and PS Vita games, and PS4, we'll get into that later. And that is, the PS3 and PS Vita have different artworks, and this is back at the time, and even still happens to this day. When games come out in different consoles, unless it's like on very rare occasions, you'd basically see the same art. Like for example, you'd see the same art as you see here in Diva F, but it, this comes to show that they put in a lot of efforts not only on the outside, but also on the inside. Or not only the inside, but the outside, you know what I mean, for the games. They didn't have to do it, but it's greatly appreciated that they did something like this. Now, you might have already noticed, and I probably mentioned it like a few times throughout this segment, <laughs> at least the Project Diva F segment, but the physical copy is in Japanese. If you need more proof, here it is on the backside. And you might be thinking to yourself, man, is it really that hard to find a North American or international version of Diva F physically? Well, no. Because believe it or not, these games were not released internationally in physical stores. Only in Japan was this released physically. We did eventually get it, but as a digital copy. And for the longest time, I thought Future Tone was the very first game uh, to do this outside of Japan. But no, Diva F on the PS Vita actually beat Future Tone to that. And also what's actually a more interesting detail, I didn't even point it out in the first part, is that the F in the PS Vita version is a lowercase, whereas in the cap it's, uh, it's capital in the PS3 version, which I think is really cool. So I also have a funny story with the Japanese copy of Diva F on the PS Vita, aka the only one that's available physically. I had to order this twice. Not twice uh, physical for these games, but twice through different people. Because one of the times I actually got the PS Vita version was not actually Diva F. So I ordered from one user from Japan, it might have been either one user or like a company that was selling uh, PS Vita games from Japan off of eBay. And I ordered it for like $15 I believe from one of them? And I got the package weeks later. Despite the fact that I ordered Diva F on the PS Vita, and I even have a receipt indicating that it was Diva F, for whatever reason, instead of Project Diva F, and I'll put it on the screen right now, it was a Japanese copy of Minecraft for the PS Vita. And normally, I would be upset by this. I would be outraged, and I'd probably be researching how to return the item. But, we live in a time where people have memed that the Hatsune Miku invented Minecraft. And because of that, I actually laughed it off and I thought it was a good joke. And since I don't really know how to return international stuff through like other countries, I donated it to the Goodwill that I work at. So I don't know what they did with that, whether it's on the store shelves or somewhere in the, the store or it's in the back room or if they threw it away. I, I don't know what happened to it, but it's no longer in my possession, but I still have that photo. It's actually hilarious. But I did end up uh, buying another copy, well, quote unquote, another copy, this copy right here 
from a user that was actually from North America. So it was actually a lot easier for me to obtain this one, and here I am with this one. It's actually such a fun story. I gotta give it to Kay. He did a fantastic job. He had to go through a lot with uh, both of these, and it really paid off. And you're gonna see more of this in uh, two more segments of this. It's also timestamped, so you could just click around uh, to wherever you want to go in case you don't want to see the whole collection and stuff. It's really up to you. This will still hold some value because playing the demo and then playing the full game, oh my gosh, it's the best feeling in the world. So here are the F second copies, both in the international North American version. Now, the PS Vita version, I wanted to get in North America, but it's pretty expensive to get on eBay because it's international. It's not the Japanese one, which Japan takes good care of their games, so it's not really that expensive. But I wanted it in English, so that way you guys can see like the differences. And uh, for those of you who've never seen any of my videos, know that these games are available internationally. So it did cost me a little bit, but I didn't get them off of eBay. I actually got it off of Mercari. This is one or two games I actually got off of Mercari, and <laughs> this is definitely it's definitely worth to check out the uh, the mobile app because these games are definitely expensive, like I mentioned before. But with Mercari, these were like only sixty dollars, so I think that's pretty cool. If you, if you need an alternative to eBay for much cheaper prices, definitely check that out. But I've heard many things, great things even, about F Second before I even like played the game. I've had it spoiled by one of my stream friends, so thanks for that, I guess. But playing F Second was the best feeling in the world. It felt like I was missing out on a lot after I played it. Or before I played it, and after playing it, I can definitely understand why so many people love it. It's actually one of my all-time favorite Project Diva games, right next to Future Tone of Mega Mix. I think they're great games nonetheless. If you haven't played F Second, you really should. It's fantastic. I absolutely love it. I can't recommend it more enough. In fact, I'd say this is one of the games that's worth getting a PS3 nowadays. And if you have a PS3 and you don't have this game, what are you doing, honestly? Just, just get it. Just get, even the PS Vita one is good from what I heard. It's funny enough, I don't actually have a PS Vita, but I wanted to collect it again for the different artwork. All right, welcome to the Diva X segment, where I show off the PS Vita version first, <laughs> because the PS4 has two different counterparts. And of course, this is the Vita one. Again, I got this off of Mercari. The artwork is super nice. I really, really love this. And I don't think there's anything interesting on the inside. In fact, I haven't really shown you guys the inside. I'm trying to hold both of the PS4. Oh, well, one of them fell out, and I think it's the one that I had for the longest time. But uh, yeah, PS Vita covers don't really have anything interesting on the back, but this is what the cartridge looks like in case you're interested. But yeah, nothing particularly too special uh, on the inside, but again, the outside, love the artwork, and I think even the back this is actually really nice as well. But that's probably not what you're here to see. In fact, I probably dropped one of the things that you came here to see. The PS4 version of Diva X has two, as I mentioned before. This is the version that we got internationally. And this is very special to me because this is the only game in my collection that I actually bought for myself. And I've had this for over five years. Never thought of uh, selling it or donating it or anything like that because this has a special place in my heart. It was the first game I played through on the channel, and this was definitely the first full Project Diva main line that I played. Up until this, up until the point where I played the game for the first time, I've only ever played Mario DX in the demo of F. So this again has a very special place in my heart. But that's <laughs> another story, because Japan has its own version of Diva X. Inside, it's basically the same game-wise, but the, on the outside, as you can see. The cover art is very different. There is a different color for the background. You have the elemental crystals in the back. I don't think there's anything worth pointing out in the back. And if you want to go even further, if you look at the inside and you remove all this, I don't know if there was like a code I just gave out or something like that, but uh, if you have the code, then uh, congratulations, you probably get something. You have essentially what is the international cover just without the, uh, the legs cut out, which is very beautiful. But if you look at the international version, we have the safety hazard. Because nothing says collection like a safety hazard. Thanks, international. We love warnings in our games. It makes us feel special. But yeah, it's very weird that the, uh, the Japanese version was called HD, 
Because I, I guess for uh, the PS4, it was actually more high definition than even like FNF Second at the time on the PS3. But it's kind of weird to just name it HD when even the PS3 games just kept it the same name. And believe it or not, these physical copies of the Japanese version of Diva X are more expensive than the international ones because of these slight differences. I paid like 50, 50 to 60 dollars for this version, whereas the international one, when it came out, and I also had a pouch, I didn't really get the pouch. Actually, both of them came with the pouch, but uh, neither one of those had the pouch. That cost me around 40 dollars, which if you go on eBay nowadays is like 20, maybe 30 dollars, depending on who you get it from. Yeah, that is a huge, huge raise <laughs> for slight differences. Man, the world of buying video games for collections is weird, I'll tell you that much. So, do you guys have a little behind the scenes on your checklist? Because you can see the, uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the microphone cord over there. <laughs> but I have all four copies of the Project Mirai series. The Japan exclusive Mirai 1, or as it's called in uh, Japan, Future Stars, uh, Hatsune Miku Future Stars Project Mirai, and Project Mirai 2 over here, as I'm gonna show it off because the, the glare on that one is just horrendous. And then I have a Japanese and English copy of Mirai DX. This is the only game, aside from Diva X, but Diva X has like differences <laughs> on the front, that I have both the international and the Japanese copy of the game. Now I don't actually have a Japanese 3DS, so I don't think I'm able to play, unless I emulate it, which I do have a leave copy, so it wouldn't be that bad. I, I would be able to play this on emulator, but honestly, because these three are the same, basically, just Mirai 2 is different with the PVs and whatnot. I feel like it would be kind of pointless just to play uh, Mirai 2 and Mirai DX because it's so similar, and maybe Project Mirai 1 would be a consideration because even though it's basically the same, the way the notes are, um, the notes are handled in the first Mario game is very different compared to the rest of the Mirai series. So the reason I actually got all three in Japanese and one in English is because of the inside of these games. And don't worry, I have all the instruction manuals, it's on the bed and whatnot, but I just wanted to clear it out so that you guys can see this. On the inside of the Japanese copies, you have these fun little designs that basically give you an idea of what modules you can get inside the game. So here's the one from Mirai 2, or Mirai 1, this is Mirai 2 right here. Yeah, as you can see, very fun little d details and whatnot. I'm sorry, I'm just <laughs> I'm just eyeing this. I, I kind of lost focus there for a second. And Mario DX actually has this as well. Oh my gosh, this is a newer copy. I actually had to like remove the seal before starting the video. This is like brand new. Look at this, so so many details. Okay, hold on. I <laughs> there's like there's like something here. I I think. Wait. Oh my gosh, actually there is. Uh, hold on. What, what, what is this? I, I have to know. I have to know right now. <laughs> oh! Pfft. No, 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 show the people, show the people. Oh my gosh. Okay, the Mirai DX wins. This was unexpected. <laughs> Although, because this is a newer copy, this is gonna be a lot harder for me to put this back in. Hopefully I can do, actually do this without ruining it. I've actually never done this before. Uh, actually, that's... Wow. That was a lot easier than I thought. So, with that said, you might think to yourself, well, there's no point in having both the English and the Japanese version of Mirai DX, since it's basically the same thing, right? Hate to break this to you, but... We got duped. It's just plain white. Even if I remove the cartridge, there's nothing on here. This is... Why? <laughs> Why were we duped? And there have been games that were released internationally that had stuff on the inside of this. Why did Mariah DX get screwed so much? I don't understand. So suffice to say, if you're going to go for a collection, I'd recommend just downloading the Mariah DX game in English on the eShop since it's $20, you don't have to waste $50. Uh, you can play that and then just get Mariah DX in Japan. You're going to have a lot more fun of a time just looking on the inside and popping out to see you could die every once in a while. We just got... I'm actually disappointed <laughs> with a physical copy of the game. I actually wanted to get this physically when it first came out, but I got it digitally. And I'm kind of glad I got it digitally first because, man, 
I was disappointed when I first saw the inside through the pictures on eBay. Oh my gosh, we got duped. So, with the Mirai games came the AR cards because this was the Nintendo 3DS and AR was a big part of the 3DS. Well, I wouldn't say it was that big, but it was pretty big for Sega to actually jump aboard. I actually have all four card sets for each of the games. Project Mirai 2, Deluxe, and DX all have the same, so I'm using DX because that's actually open, and that's the one I've used in my playthrough of Mario DX. Oh, excuse me there. If you want to check it out, it's at the top right corner. I highly recommend it if you want more Mario DX content because I, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie when I say it's probably one of my favorite Let's Plays I've done of all time. A lot of Evergreen was playing that, I highly recommend. So here is the character cards that you get. This is the Mario DX one, and this is the Project Mario one, the first one. I do like these ones better, per se, because they actually look like a little toy set, or like a figure set, kind of like um, the Mika figures you'd get. So in that aspect, this is really cool. Although I do love the design of the little patterns at the back here as well. Also, these have a back, these don't. And I also realized that in Mirai 2, this actually has Rin in the back and not Luca. I guess I just went with this one since Luca's my all-time favorite Vocaloid. She gets privilege. But the big thing is the PVAR cards. These are basically AR cards that allows you to see the uh, PVs, or I guess kind of like the animation portion of the PV, like the mod, the other uh, Vocaloids. So this is what the AR cards look like internationally, or in the Mirai 2 Mirai DX. Basically kind of like little postcards, I think it's pretty cool, very cute details. Here is the back of it as well, I know I kind of spoiled the ending of Mirai DX, oh no, spoiler. <laughs> But this is what it looks like in the first Mirai games. And honestly, I love these way more than the Mirai DX ones. It's basically gameplay footage, or like little scenes from the game itself. It kind of reminds me of those um, little cards. Who remembers as a kid? I especially remember the Pokemon ones. I know, bringing up Pokemon again. But there were like little collectible Pokemon cards that aren't like TZG, where some of them were like the Pokemon character, or like the Pokemon, from like in the anime art style, and then there were cards that had like scenes from the uh, the anime, and I thought that was the coolest thing. So when I looked at this, I instantly kind of got nostalgia, and it reminded me so much of that. I absolutely love these, and I'm pretty sure these are inter these are um, region free, so I might actually test these out at some point, maybe on a Mariah DX video. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I might bring that series back just for like one video, just to see if these work or not. And even if they don't, these are probably the coolest cards I've ever seen. And with my um, my copy of Mirai 1, and I think actually Mirai 2 as well, um, there was a note on there uh, basically telling me that they would love to work with me again. Although, <laughs> the way they said it is it like, I hope to deal with you again as if they were threatening me. I'm pretty sure they don't mean to threaten me, but uh, I kind of laughed thinking that at first. Also, the conditions of these cards are actually really, really solid. Or like, uh, these are very firm cards, I should say. Almost look like you, you can bend, you can't even bend them unless you really put some effort into it. These are really sturdy. And in case you didn't believe me, this is the Mirai 2 card. On the back side, there's Rin. Also, these feel a lot more flexible than even the Mirai DX ones. <laughs> these are... These look like they can easily break if you're not careful. So you might either watch the whole collection or you might have skipped this part, and I wouldn't blame you, especially if you saw like what I described this portion of the video. And I definitely saved the best for last. Because while I would normally just get the physical copies of these games, there were special collector's editions for these, and I wanted to go above and beyond. And that meant spending a little extra money, but I think these are worth it. These are well beyond worth it. Also, I'm like, yeah, I think I'm on the right zoom. Oh my gosh, I, I need to zoom out a little bit more. I didn't even realize this version was so much bigger. Holy cow. So these are the collector's editions of Future Tone DX and Mega Mix. And what's so special about them is that not only do they have a physical copy of the game, but they also have a Blu-ray and a CD respectively. This one obviously having the Blu-ray to celebrate Niku's 10th anniversary, and I believe these ones... Actually, let's take a look at this one first. I believe these ones have the um, PVs as well as the intro 
to um, the Project Diva games from the past up to Future Tone because keep in mind, Mega Mix was not released at the time. And these discs are, some of these are upside down, are so gorgeous. And this is the second thing I actually opened before, or unwrapped before <laughs> the video was recorded because this was actually sealed as well. But, oh my gosh, this is so gorgeous. Even the instruction booklet. I have to show you guys the instruction booklet. This is so freaking gorgeous. It's so solid. Like, look at all this. This is amazing. This feels so good. I I'm sorry. I'm like so side distracted. I'm not even talking because I'm looking at how I'm actually smiling right now. This is this is honestly amazing. I love this book so much. And I especially love the artwork. Okay, not only a Future Stone DX, this is what the game looks like. There is, is there anything on the inside or is it plain white? No, it's plain white. Wow, Diva X got like the... <laughs> Speaking of Diva X, there's advertisement for that. <laughs> Diva X definitely got the special treatment. But man, never did I think I would actually get a physical copy of Mariah DX. Go! And I hope you guys didn't hear that. Oh my gosh, I bumped my, into my mic twice. That's how excited I am to show off of this. But even the box itself is so beautiful. I absolutely love this artwork because it reminds me of the the, uh, the Project Diva F F Second X the, uh, box. Even though there's no different ones, it's still gorgeous. Especially this one <laughs> with all the folk like characters. It's so beautiful. <laughs> K De Luca, so freaking good in this one. I absolutely love it. This is hands down one of the greatest boxes I've ever seen for a Project Diva collection. I really hope to do more of this in the future. And even if it's only Japanese exclusive, I don't mind just saving a couple hundred dollars just to have this because this is so worth it. And this game made me realize that Inbound Customs exists because it took a couple days after it came here uh, to pass through the Custom Inbounds, I believe. I don't actually know how that works. But it was absolutely worth it because, oh my gosh, this this is so gorgeous. And now for Mega Mix, which I have to be real, still feels like a dream that I actually have a physical copy. Let alone the fact that there's even a physical copy or even just a Miku game on Switch from Sega. This is, to this day, I still feel like I'm dreaming. And this person was really smart to rubber band this together because this actually comes off if you take it out of the plastic wrap. I'll it's kind of ripped right here, do you notice? But I, I, I don't really go for conditions. This basically comes off, and this reveals a much larger version of the artwork that's actually inside the paper here. The paper has the back, basically everything you need to know. And this is, again, for Project Diva's 10th anniversary, and this is what the CD looks like. It's actually completely different artwork. Again, it, it goes to show, they didn't have to do that much for this thing. Oh, this is actually on the back too, I did not notice that. I should have known it was on the back. But again, it definitely shows that they put a lot of efforts, even if they didn't have to, because they love the series so much. Oh, oh whoa, whoa, <laughs> I forgot everything falls like that. But this is the, before I get into the CD, this is a code, I believe, for a copy of Catch the Wave digitally. I'm not gonna reveal the code. I don't know if I've already downloaded it. I don't actually know how to do that because I don't understand Japanese. So if I've done it, then you, I probably might have in my phone or something. I, I don't know. But uh, I think it's really cool that they give you a digital code for buying the collector's edition, which I believe sold, sold out in Japan almost immediately because of the um, low production. But this is what the CD looks like. It's so big, and again, the artwork is so amazing. They went above and beyond with this. They really did, and they didn't have to. Even like the CDs themselves. These are all, again, I believe these are all of the songs that are both in Mega Mix as well as in past Project Diva games. Just so much details went into this. It's so amazing. Although, I don't think just X and... Oh, right, because X didn't really have that much stuff. I was thinking, where's X? X didn't really have any. Oh, look at that, I actually forgot! Uh, the first disc was actually hidden within the, the uh, booklet here, which, again, has all the songs available to you, and even, like, some beautiful artwork. Like, you see the whole... Uh, box art without it being folded. You have some other art as well. This this goes above and beyond and I absolutely love it. And there's even the artwork for Catch the Wave. It's beautiful. And the time to address the elephant in the room. I did say that I opened off screen both of the Mirai DX and the Blu-ray for the Future Tone DX. But I never opened off screen the Switch, cart the Switch version or the physical copy of Mega Mix. 
And that is because I wanted to give my reaction live on camera because this is something I dreamt of ever since, even before the Switch came out, when Diva X was first introduced. I wanted it on a Nintendo console because I thought it was a great fit for the Nintendo lineup. And Mega Mix came around and that was absolutely right. This is probably one of the best third party games you could get right now. One of the best rhythm games on the Switch. And I wanted to get my reaction live because of that. So I have my scissors here and it's gonna take me a little, uh, actually, it might not take me that long to actually open the thing. Actually, it might. It is really sealed. Oh, never mind. This must say it's really sealed on there. But uh, if I can get that out. Also, kids, be very careful with your scissors. <laughs> because, actually, if you're gonna do this, have a grow it up open with scissors or use your teeth. But with something like this, why would you even use your teeth? Let's be real. Oh my gosh. Okay. I am actually holding my excitement right now. Oh my gosh. I'm actually nervous and excited at the same time. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! This is so beautiful! I love the cartridge! I don't know what this is... Oh, I think this is the DLC. I don't know if I use it or not, but uh, if you want the DLC, congratulations. Oh my gosh! Look at the cartridge! It's everything I want! I... I... Keep in mind, I've never seen anything online about the cartridge. I avoided opening for stuff like this. Because I wanted to use it for the very first time. Oh my gosh, this is beyond amazing. Guys, I'm legitimately holding back tears right now. This is the best thing ever. I don't even care if there's like nothing on the inside. Just seeing the cartridge just makes me more than happy. I'm actually almost crying, guys. Can you believe it? This is, this is beautiful. This is really beautiful. Again, I hate repeating myself. But it feels like it's a dream to not only have Project Eva on the Switch, the mainline series on another console, but to have a physical copy of the game. This is, this is the best thing. This really is. So far, that is every single physical copy of every Project Eva game out there. And I say so far because in the future, there's definitely going to be more physical copies or unless they go the whole digital only route internationally, which would be kind of the worst way to go around, especially with stuff like this, we'll probably never have it again. But I really hope they do make more physical copies, and I hope they release it internationally. Because even though I love having it digitally, there's some part of me that loves having the physical collections to show people what I'm really passionate about. And even if it isn't everyone's passion, I love showing out the fact that Project Diva means so much to me, not only on YouTube, but generally in my life. And I'm so glad that I finally got the courage to start collecting. It took months, but I think the end result is so worth it. And if you want to do something like this, go ahead. But I will say it's going to cost you a lot of money. <laughs> like it cost me, I, I don't know what the total was, I want to say close to maybe a thousand dollars, but like... Not really, considering the fact that some games are like $30. I've had my Diva X uh, game for like five years of the original price before it was reduced. So that may be closer to like $300 to like $500, which is still a lot for a collection like this. But I think every game has been worth it. No, I don't think I know that this has been so worth it. Thank you guys so much for not only watching this video, but for supporting my Project Diva, my inner Project Diva, for so long. Without you guys, I don't think anything like this would have been possible. I don't think I would realize that Project Diva would carry me for so long. Maybe even longer than I expected. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. And once again, thank you guys for watching this video. And I hope to see you guys in a future video. Until we meet again, do remember, to take care of it.